How many families here has stories of death? And you know how sad it would be. But you know what? In the making of God's love story in every family, God will make a beautiful story out of every misery. God is not done yet. Loss of our loved ones hurts. Like what happened to many of us. We migrated here in Canada. Probably some of you found your spouse here or you still be pounding your spouse or pounding. <laughs> probably, probably some of you just came here together with your family. And what happened? Just yes, probably. Probably not physically dead, our uh, loved ones today, but the relationship looks dead. But you know what? Remember, in God's love story for you, God will make a beautiful story out of your misery. The family of Naomi went to a place outside God's protection. And yet, God used their circumstances to bring them back to His place of blessing. You know, they should not be in Moab. They should have stayed in Israel. Because that's the place where God has promised them. But like many in our days today, they go from places to places to take chance. Are you with me? And physically, it is also applied for those people who try to live on their own. Instead of being in the provision and protection of God, they went out of God's presence and tried to seek their own. But they heard that God restored blessing to Israel in, in this story. You know, like in Christian life, many of us are passing kinds of famine. Famine of spread of blessing, famine of, you know, so many things, financial blessing as Christian. But sad to say, some left the Lord. Some even left the ministry. Well, that's a sad story. But anyway, Naomi suffered so much in order for them. And God allowed those things, misery to happen to them, in order for God to bring them back to the center of God's perfect will. Naomi tried to get out of her responsibility by sending away her daughters-in-law by making excuses. Try to imagine. Because it's the duty now of the mother-in-law to take care of the daughters-in-law. How many mothers-in-law don't, don't like their daughters-in-law? <laughs> There's so many. Oh, let me change the question. How many daughters-in-law don't like their mother-in-law? <laughs> well, culturally speaking, well, it, this is a real story that a mother-in-law or the daughter-in-law loves the mother-in-law. Here, the common story comes first. Now, the children are dying, are de dead. Now, the two daughters are the responsibility of the mother-in-law because by tradition and by culture, the mother-in-law must produce another children and then marry them to the daughters to continue their obligation in protecting and preserving the clan. But Naomi is already old. So, instead of being responsible to the daughters-in-law, he was telling them, you go on your own now. I need to go home. Well, like many of us, we don't like responsibility. We want peaceful life. We don't want obligation. Are you with me? That's why we, we're not happy to pay taxes. We're not happy to give our tithes. We're not happy to follow our leaders in the church. Are you with me? We don't like that. Parang ako lang ang that's why there's always commission, con, uh, there's always commotion and consumption when there will be responsibilities in us. Reporting, attendance, uh, so much sport. Why? Like Naomi, his time of his life. But you know what? God will make a beautiful story out of our misery. Oprah went the other way. Oprah is a type of a person who missed the opportunity to go to the center of God's perfect will. Did I say Oprah? No, not Oprah. Orpa. Baka magalit si Oprah sa <laughs> Orpa. But Ruth, who is, you know, who choose to be in God's love story, followed Naomi, not because she's a good mother-in-law, but because Naomi worshipped the living God. She followed Naomi because of her God. Ruth chapter 1, 16 to 19. Look at this famous quotation of Ruth. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. 
And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me. Be, be it ever so severely. If anything but death separate you and me. Wow, what a daughter-in-law. Hmm, are you with me? Yung iba, buhay pa, ayaw nang magkita eh. Eh, ito, no, pinaaalis na, nakikisinisiksikin sa rin. Amazing. And I want you to remind, to remind you this, God is doing a love story for Naomi, not actually for Ruth. Naomi was a depressed, three of his love, her love ones died. And the only thing left was an obligation. The one went away, she was happy, but the other sticks on. How many of you has problem that sticks on? Does not want to leave you? It's always there. You came to Canada, it follows you. <laughs> Are you with me? But you know this? Notice this. Those who sticks on you will be what, where and who, whom God will use to keep the love story fulfilled in your life for your family. Give God the best luck for you. <laughs> so, when you pray, pag ayaw lumakyas. Let them. Number two. Where is that? Oops. God will use somebody to bring us to a place greater than us. You know, Naomi, the only wish that she has is just to go back to a place where he is. Her relatives will be there to protect her. But God has a greater things for her. You know, probably most of you came here to Canada just to find, you know, milk and honey. But you put, find more than that. You find Visa, American Express, and other things. <laughs> Ruth chapter 2, 1 to 12. Let me say this to you. Beyond our understanding, God is the master of setting up every person towards his greater plan. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Remember that verse. I know that things I thought towards you, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you good future. But for that to happen, for that to happen, there are many things that will happen in our life, like the story that we are reading today, the story of Ruth. Let's look at that verse. Now Naomi had relative, chapter 2, verse 1. Has a husband sign from the clan of Alimelech, a man of standing whose name was Boaz. The, and Ruth, the Boabite, said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the left over grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out and began to glean in the field behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Elimelech. Look at Pastor Bob. This is not, uh, this is easy to be read than to visualize. Because remember this, women during the time are not allowed just to enter anyone's field. Like probably many of us, you came to Canada trying to work in some nobody's place and you keep on applying and you were rejected until the time you were accepted. How many of you tried many times to come to Canada and on the last chance you were accepted? How many of you did not even plan to come to Canada and when you came to Canada, you know, things just like so easy and then eventually something bad is going uh, coming to your life. But you know, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, God is doing in His love story for you, God will use somebody to bring you in a place greater than you. He's looking upon you if you are 5'5", five five, He's looking upon you 10'10", ten ten, <laughs> greater than you. If your waistline is 22, He's looking upon that 52, bigger than you. 